Okay, Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Okay. Well, Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasman Shri Guru Veda Maha. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Day, Vengo Varvani Prachari Day. Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satari Day. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adwaita Gadan Har, Siva Sadi Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, um, Let's see, one I was just thinking of a particular verse. Okay. Um, go into the, uh, the 12th canto, uh, chapter 3. And I think it's verse number 51. Mm -hmm. 12, 351. Yes, good message. Hmm. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, we are unwill, unable to see you. Uh, did you off your camera, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, I turned off my video because okay. I'm not so I'm not so seeable today. <laughs> okay, Guru Maharaj, that's it. Yeah, the ladies can understand it. <laughs> that's okay, Guru Maharaj. No problem. Um, here is the last group. Hey, Kalea Dosha Nidi Rajan, Astiako Mahagun, Kirtanari Vakrishna Siam Mukta Sangam Param Rajan. Translation My dear King, although Kali Yuga is an ocean of faults, there is still one good quality about this age. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one can become free from material bondage and be promoted to the transcendental kingdom. Very uh, succinct purport. Um, after mentioning innumerable faults of the age of Kali, Sukadeva Goswami now mentions its one brilliant aspect. Just as one powerful king can kill innumerable thieves, one brilliant spiritual quality can destroy all the contamination of this age. It is impossible to overestimate the importance of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, especially in this fallen age. Hmm. So we we uh, we learn from Vedic literature that the uh, ages of man are somewhat synonymous with the different seasons of the year. We have spring, we have summer, we have fall, and then we have winter. And each of the seasons has certain characteristics. And people live and accordingly and are affected by the seasons. So they, they adjust according to that season. Uh, we might say that the, uh, the four ages we have Satya Yuga, which is the age of enlightenment, the age of Dharma, the age where practically 99% of the population was God consciousness. Uh, not only God conscious, but fully God conscious. It's called the uh, age of enlightenment, the golden age. And in that age, there was, uh, of course, in every age, there is what is called yuga, dharma. Yuga means age, and dharma means that religious practice that gives the benefit of the age. There are many religious practices that one can perform in any age, but 
each ace has one particular emphasis on a particular pra practice. When it's given that foremost attention and practice, it quickly and continuously, I think that's the important word, without deviation, it brings one to the perfectional stage. In Satya Yuga, it was the Astanga Yoga process, or meditation on the Lord within the heart. Krishna describes this process in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Yama, Niyama, Asana, uh, Pratyahara, Pranayama, Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi. It's called Astanga, or eight parts, eight limbs, Anga, Asta Anga, Astanga, means eight parts. So people would practice the God realizations according to these eight processes. And the culmination was that one, the Lord would be meditated upon within one's heart. The Lord sits within the heart of all living entities. He's called Antaryami, means the indwelling manifestation of the Supreme within the heart. And uh, it's described by Srila Prabhupada. He is nine inches tall. This is what it's mentioned in the Shastras. He is a Vishnu form, and he has four arms, of course. Vishnu forms are always four-armed. And uh, Prabhupada had some of his artists draw a picture of the super soul or the indwelling manifestation. So uh, to come to that stage, of course, people live a very long time, comparatively speaking. They Sometimes we hear they lived up to 100,000 years. So you might ask, how is that possible? We hardly even live to 100 years in this age. And we see there's always so many physical and mental difficulties in this age. How can it possibly, anyone could live 100,000 years, not just 1,000, but 100,000? Well, the age was nice. People were practically on the level of Paramahansa, and then it was topmost devotional service. The season, the seasons within the age were always according to the arrangement of God. It would never rain during the day. It always would rain in the evening. And then in the morning, the sun would come out, the ground would be wet. And all the green agri would be nourished by the sun after it gets a bath from the rain during the evening time. So the seasons were on. People's memories were sharp. Bodily strength. Now we don't have much bodily strength. You know, uh, we can hardly even make, drag our own body around what to speak about having strength. Um, mercifulness, people were very merciful towards each other and they all worship the Lord in a very exemplary way. This was the age of such a yuga and it lasted very long. It lasted for more than 1,928,000 thousand years and then as time goes on because it's the material world things have a tendency to go down this is the nature of the material energy um, if you're not actively trying to bring improvement you will automatically become less whether it's material or spiritual, if there's an, not an active application of attention and energy applied to whatever you're doing, 
without doing anything, if you think I won't do anything and nothing will change, no. The material energy always goes down. <laughs> That is the nature of the material energy. It always starts to go down to the lowest, the lowest denominator. So we see as the ages went on, people were, uh, things were starting to move away. And one of the good qualities, the religion has four legs. It sits on truthfulness, austerity, mercifulness, and cleanliness. So in such a yuga, all four were very much prominent, but in, when the next age, Trati, Trita Yuga came, one of the legs was challenged. And then we had three legs that religion is standing on, with one being very weak. Uh, in that age, still people were highly spiritual qualified, and Agnihotra uh, was the means by which people would worship the Lord. The priests would be able to chant from the Vedas, the mantras from the Rig Veda, Shama Veda, and Yajur Veda. And people would, uh, were so expert in chanting the mantras that they were perfectly done. And gold, grains, precious metals, various types of uh, opulences from different categories, the best fruits, the best metals, the best foodstuffs, all of these were used as sacrifice in these Agni Hotra. And the fire in the Agni Hotra, the Agni itself, is the tongue of Vishnu. And chanting the mantras is the offering, and the ghee is poured onto the fire. And with the mantras, and when people would perform these, and this was the way by which people would advance spiritually. There was a lot of material opulences in those days. People could afford performing these easily as opposed to now where these opulences are not available. Opulence means those things that are naturally given by God in the form of natural resources such as gold, silver, pearls, emeralds, and just nature's abundance in the, in, the, in the best possible quality. But still, there was a little bit less austerity. So austerity was lost a little bit in that age. And then as things went down, as we came through that age, that age lasted 1,200,000. I believe 48,000 years. Um, another leg of religion was lost, and that was cleanliness. And now we have uh, Dwarpa Yuga. A lot of the pastimes we hear in the Bhagavatam were performed during the Dwarpa Yuga. And in Dwarpa Yuga, the means for self-realization was a very costly uh, deity worship. Or we, we say the Pancharatriki system, which is a very essential part of the Vedas, teaching people how to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his form as a deity. And uh, there were many rules, many regulations, many restrictions, and it was done with great opulence. Prabhupada would say, I've given you only 20% of the rules in deity worship in this age because you cannot follow. So we can imagine 80% was, wasn't given to us because in that age, people were highly qualified to offer 
uh, worship of the Lord in his deity form. And costly jewelry was offered, nice garments, wonderful food. So the deity was worshipped in the best possible way. And of course, along with the chanting of the mantras. So that was the means for self-realization in this age, in that age. You'll see that we perform deity worship too, but it's not the Yuga Dharma. But Prabhupada introduced deity worship into our society because he understood that uh, in order to develop Brahminical qualities, or the qualities of the mode of goodness, which are conducive to the execution of the process of devotional service, deity worship is probably the most direct and most effective way to develop those qualities. But one has to be clean, one has to be punctual, one has to be humble. All of these things are necessary in order to execute deity worship effectively and continuously. So in that age, that was the means for self-realization. That age lasted 864,000 years. And another one of the legs was challenged and that was the leg of mercifulness. So mercifulness was starting to reduce. So you see as the ages go on, the, the legs of religion are being challenged. Now we come to the present age, which is called Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is clear we, from this verse here. It says it's, it's an ocean of faults. You see, Dosha Nidhi, ocean of faults. There are so many faults in this age. Um, prior to this particular verse, in succession, you read what are some of the deficiencies in this age, you know. For instance, people will, people will consider keeping long hair as something very beautiful. Kesha Dharna, it's called. Uh, of course, that doesn't apply to ladies, but to men, men will have, wear, have long hair and think that is some kind of beauty. Um, what are some of the, the faults in this age? Marriage will be done by agreement as opposed to, and marriage will be based on physical attraction. And we know physical attraction is not a lasting principle. It has a tendency to wear off in due course of time. And therefore marriage becomes like an agreement between two people. And when the agreement is no longer fulfilled, when one of the partners is not up to the standard according to the other partner, in other words, either sexual proclivity or uh, financial expertise, then the marriage gets chain challenged and then people separate and there's divorce and so many other problems. Um, you see the, the, the uh, seasons, you know, sometimes it's cold in the summer times, sometimes it's warm in the winter time. There's, there's inclement weather, there is tidal waves, forest fires, droughts, pestilence. Now this is the age of Kali. Um, the Bhagavatam gives a very explicit explanation of the age of Kali. Um, perhaps very soon we'll uh, well, what we'll do is we'll do a series of classes on the characteristics of the age of Kwa, Ka, Kali. Uh, Srila Prabhupada didn't stay long enough to give us the purports on these verses, but he did. Um, in other classes, there were other classes. Uh, when Prabhupada was speaking in the first canto, he took out his manuscript with the uh, verses from the age of Kali and he gave extensive uh, talks on these uh, qualities of the age of Kali just to preview us and to remind us and to even to indicate that this is the age we live in. So you can't expect anything good in this age. <laughs> 
at least from the material point of view. There are so many difficulties, so many problems. You know, telling the truth is just not possible. Um, there's lies on all levels. You, know, you can't believe the politicians. You can't believe anyone. People don't speak the truth. Everyone has some idea on what they can gain. So they speak in such a way as to give a different understanding of what is the truth. So people are not truthful at all in this age. And they don't even know what truth is. <laughs> But to speak of trying to, you know, come up to the standard of truthfulness, people don't even know what it is. Everyone lies or does, you know, whatever they want, whenever they want. In the first canto, it describes that uh, people will not be very strong in body in this age. They won't live very long. Their memories will be weak. They will not have, they will not show mercy towards uh, each other. Uh, there's a whole long list of at least eight to 10 different outstanding deficiencies in this age. Lying, cheating, the various types of thievery. It is just one problem after another. And that's just this age. You. You might say, well, why is it? That's like saying, why is it cold in the wintertime? Because it's winter. So this age is what it is. It's just people are not aging. They have no tendency for spirituality. They consider to, to making money and being popular because of having money as you know something wonderful. Now we see. Who are the important people in society? The wealthy men, the people who have a lot of money. But that is not a quality at all. In fact, you know, if you are a good cheater and you know how to manipulate and cheat others, you can gain wealth in that way. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean because one is wealthy, they're a good person. Right? And most of the time, it's the opposite. So yeah, a wealthy person is seen as somebody important, somebody worshipable in this age. Politicians, you know, they still say anything to the people in general just to get the votes. And then once they get in, they say, well, we're sorry, we can't keep what we said because the situation is different now. And so they lie to the people just to get into political posts. And you find that it's nowadays, just like now we have a pandemic going on. Or some people say a pandemic, some people say a plandemic, some people say it doesn't exist. You know, it's just nobody knows. It's just a lot of talk, a lot of lies, a lot of speculations. And so you, this is the age now. Nobody really cares about the welfare of others. And if they do, it's because there's something in it for them. If I'm going to be good to you, if I'm going to be nice to you, then what do I get out of it? So this is the age of Kali. And therefore, this verse spoken by uh, Maharaj Parikshit, he's speaking to... Uh, I mean, he's speaking, he, uh, Sukadev Goswami is speaking to Maharaj Parikshit. Ocean of faults, so many faults. If you think of an ocean, you think something vast, something deep, something undescribable. And so there are so many faults in this thing. So don't be surprised if things are like that. It's just the age. <laughs> And it'll continue. And Srila Prabhupada says, as Kali Yuga goes on, it'll become worse and worse and worse. But Lord Chaitanya appeared in this particular Kali Yuga at 400, uh, I'm sorry, five.
Hare Krishna. 535 years ago, 500, it shines very brightly. It's so bright that it can push back the effects of Kali Yuga very easily. And that is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari Hari, Hari Rama Hari Rama, Rama Rama Hari Hari. It seems so simple. It also seems like it's just uh, not possible that something so simple could be so powerful. But it is it's the names of God. Hare is the vocative. It is the spiritual energy of the Lord and personified by the Shimati Radharani. And Krishna is the supreme personality of God, the source of everything, the sunam bonum, the absolute truth. And Hari again in the second half, and Rama also. Rama means reservoir of pleasure. It may also indicate Lord Ramachandra. Could also indicate Krishna, who is known as Radhika Raman. It may also indicate Lord Balaram. Rama is more or less understood in relationship to one's mood of worship like that but it's the absolute truth the supreme personality of godhead so you'll see in this particular mantra you don't find any other words but the, the names of the supreme personality of godhead that's why it's called maha mantra it's not just mantra maha means great the greatest of all mantras. Now, people in previous ages, they were aware of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, but it wasn't the Yuga Dharma. And because they were more materially qualified, also more spiritually qualified, it was too easy for them to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And so they might chant it, but it wasn't the Yuga Dharma. So the Yuga Dharma has to be based on some austerity. So that austerity means one has to work for it. So in this age, although it appears to be so simply given, just chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And it is quite easy, quite simple. But the thing is, we are not qualified. We don't have the qualities in this age to chant. It's become so hard to do something apparently so simple. Why? Because it's the age of Kali. It's just fraught with and saturated with all bad qualities. Just like if you happen to eat some food cooked by someone who is not a good person, you will be racked with ill consciousness, if you sleep at night or any time, you'll, you'll have dreams of ghosts, and evil things. This is all due to the age. It's all due to the age that even on the subtle platform, even when you don't come in contact with somebody who is sinful, simply because the age is so permeated with, with sin, with, with, con, with material contamination, and people are affected, even good people, even devotees. But we should un understand that here is our saving grace. As it says here, it's, it's impossible to overestimate the importance of chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. You can't over glorify it. It's not possible. All you can do is under glorify it. It is so powerful, so direct, and so effective and elevating the consciousness of the living entities in this age, if we work at it, if we practice it seriously every day, I always recommend that we chant our rounds the first thing we do as the day begins, setting the foundation of our consciousness that will continue throughout the day, finishing our prescribed number of rounds early, and then going on with our material act or our spiritual activities throughout the day. And of course, even chanting more, especially now when we are in a situation where we are overwhelmed with a lot of 
apparent dangers coming from all sectors. And there are always people who are, even if you're peaceful, they won't let you become peaceful. This is just the age of Kali. No one will allow you to become peaceful. If, you, if you're peaceful, people will become envious of you and try to destroy your peace to make themselves feel good. Now, this is the age of Kali. Relatives, friends, so-called relatives and friends cause, cause problems to their relatives and friends. So many problems. But Chandra Krishna. And you know, as you see, Srila Prabhupada's statements in regard to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he emphasized continuous chanting. Not just 16 rounds. He said, why 16 rounds? He said 16,000 rounds. What did he mean by that? He means chant more. This is where you will find protection from the rainstorm or the hailstorm of Kali Yuga. You'll get protection from Kali Yuga. You'll get peace and happiness coming within your heart and mind from the Holy Name. And you will gain the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because the name of the Lord and the Lord are non-different. So the glories of the Holy Name are unlimited because the glories of the Holy Name are Krishna and Krishna is unlimitedly glorious. All the forms, all the qualities, all the names, all the pastimes, all everything is found within the name of Krishna. Krishna's name is the supreme personification of the entire absolute truth, simply through this chanting of the Maha Mantra. So we've been given something very powerful. We don't have much choice. There's no other place to go. <laughs> if you're looking for something in Kali Yuga that will give you some satisfaction and some protection, you might come up with different ideas, but all of these cannot in this age because this age is so full of problems. <laughs> so don't be surprised. <laughs> It's just the way it is. <laughs> but we should not become fearful. That's the last thing we want to do. Because we know, just like a little child, he can't protect himself. But he knows his father can. And so whenever there's danger, he always runs to his father. And he feels completely satisfied and happy and protected. Knowing that his father will give him protection and security. So we, uh, if we take this, here, this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra as our life and soul, not just simple, simply something that we do as part of our day, but as the essence of all of our spiritual activities, the essence of all of our activities in general, then uh, Kali Yuga will become like Satya Yuga. And that's also Lord Chaitanya has appeared and he's delivering this message of the chanting of the Hari Krishna Maha Mantra. And so it says that amidst of all this, this degradation in Kali Yuga, there is a golden age which is growing side by side. As Kali Yuga is increasing, Lord Chaitanya's movement is also increasing. So people are more and more people are chanting and those who are chanting are becoming more and more empowered to, ins to inspire others to chant also. So for the next uh, 5,000 years, starting with the appearance of Lord Chaitanya in the year 1486, count 5,000 years from that date, uh, Krishna consciousness will continue to spread. And it'll grow more and more and more. And after 5,000 years, it will reach, uh, it will create a Satya Yuga in the midst of Kali Yuga for those who take to it. And then gradually it will reduce and go back to nil. And then Kali Yuga will again race in full force with 
the most horrible things you can imagine. All you have to do is read the 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and you will get an indication of how horrible this age is as it goes on in the future. So our goal is to get out of the material world, not to try to make a nice place. Prabhupada said, if you go into the bathroom, don't try to make the bathroom into a deity room. You can't do it. It's, it's the bathroom. You get, you go in, you do your business, and you leave. So that's our job. We do our business. We finish up our our material life. We go. We purify our consciousness, and then we return to Krishna in the spiritual world. That is the goal of this process of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra to bring us back to Krishna in the spiritual world, where life is eternal, full of knowledge and unlimitedly joyful <laughs> and that is our that is our birthright birthright means inheritance just like if you stay within the family of a rich person when those when the parents leave they bequeath everything to their children and the children become the benefit beneficiary so if we stay in this Hare krishna movement and chant the holy names serve the vaishnavas we will uh, eventually uh, go back to the spiritual world. And that means that that is the end of all, all material, all suffering. That is the goal. The material world is not our home. We're here somehow. We don't know how we got here, but we're here. <laughs> Sometimes we try to trace out, how did I get here? Well, that will take much, much um, uh, what we say, study. It may take lifetimes of study to figure out how you got into this material world. But we know somehow or other, we're here. <laughs> now it's better, just like somehow you wind up in jail. You don't know why you're in jail. You realize you're here because you committed a crime. You can't remember the crime you're in, you committed, but here you are in the jail being restricted. So living in the material world means restricted, restricted restrictions and constantly being harassed by the material energy. So um, if we take this chanting of the Hare Krishna as our life and soul, we will supersede and transcend all of the miseries of this material world. And then when it's time, we will talk to what they help porn a John money, 19 month, 80 surge, and we'll go back home, back to Godhead. And Prabhupada said, there's another ISKCON in the spiritual world. And I'll be there. He probably said, I'll be there to greet each and every one of you as you come back to join us in the ISKCON and the spiritual world. So, yeah. Um, this is uh, this is the good news. <laughs> this is the good news. So take this chanting most seriously, even if it's difficult. Continue to chant. Continue to try to perfect your chanting, and along with that, think of ways to how to serve the Vaishnavas. If you do these two things, these two things in and of itself will bring you back to the spiritual world. Chant Hare Krishna and serve the devotees of the Lord. Okay. Hare Krishna. So we'll stop here. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for the very wonderful class. Thank you for reminding us again about the chanting of the holy name. Thank you so much. Um, I see two raised hands, Hetal Mataji um, and Sri Devi Mataji. Hetal Mataji, you want to go first with your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj, for your um, lovely inspiration regarding chanting. Um, the, the way I understand it, and I think you've explained this, but the way I understand it is that in this age, the prescribed medicine is chanting the holy name, but our consciousness is very low, so it makes it difficult to chant. And I think um, most of us probably on this call have had experiences in the past where we've lost faith in the 
leaders maybe um, and people or just generally lost faith. So maybe that's one of the reasons because we lack faith. Now we're chanting, so we must have a little faith, but how do we increase that faith? Well, uh, faith can be increased by our experiences in Krishna consciousness, but faith, faith is also comes by way of understanding our position in relationship to everything that we are a spirit, soul, part and parcel of Krishna. And Krishna is the most merciful manifestation of the Godhead. I mean, I'm going to say Lord Chaitanya is the most merciful manifestation of the Godhead because he has personally come to give us this mercy. Uh, he's giving it to people who are not qualified. So you might say, well, you have a low consciousness. But Lord Chaitanya, by his mercy, converted Jagai and Madai, who were two very sinful and very criminal type persons to Krishna consciousness. And that particular pastime illustrates the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. He doesn't discriminate. So the mercy is available for each and every one of it. How, so if we live our life according to the principles of devotion, then when we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we will get the maximum amount of benefit. And what does that mean? What does that mean to live our life? So we should practice the qualities that are conducive to devotion. You practice humility, you practice tolerance, you practice patience, you practice cleanliness, you practice truthfulness. And most, one of the most important qualities is not to be disturbed by happiness and distress. To somehow be, we use the word equipoised in happiness and distress. Uh, these are some of the qualities, simplicity. Uh, these are all, these are the qualities that are conducive to our chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. If we're not practicing these good qualities, we call them good qualities because they are the nature of the soul's, soul's existence. The soul has good qualities. If we're not practicing these things and if we're acting in the lower mode such as passion and ignorance then we'll find to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra becomes a little difficult and the process is very slow but still that doesn't mean we should give up the process so we should try to cultivate the knowledge that is conducive to our spiritual practice at the same time chant the Holy Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and associate with devotees. Find those devotees that inspire you in Krishna consciousness and take that association. Um, we need association because by nature we are sentient beings. And so we like to be with others. We, that is our nature. We are social, we are sentient. So in that, in the, with these qualities means that we, we find happiness in association with people who are like us, who, are, who have similar goals in life, who have similar qualities in life. We should sort of search out that type of association. It's available. And then, um, you know, go deeper into that relationship and continue to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So it's a process, it's a process. And patience is one of the qualities that is necessary in order to stay on the path. Mm -hmm. If we're not patient, if we get disturbed by happiness and distress, and then we'll find ourselves finding it difficult to make progress. So, you know, practice. Don't get discouraged, yes. just continue to practice. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Sri Devi Mataji, you want to go ahead with your question? Uh, yes, thank you, Navani. Please accept my humble obeisance, please, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, in this lecture, at one point, 
you said that uh, even if you want to be peaceful, even if you want to live, you know, peacefully, simply doing your own bhakti yoga, other people will not let you. They will, you know, try to destroy your peace or your happiness just to feel good. So my question is, how can you very quickly recognize this and avoid these uh, episodes or such encounters? Because devotee is always trying to help other people. And we must be careful not to get entangled with such people, isn't it? Well, there's, there's different ways to associate. If you're going to associate with people to uplift them, that is called outreach or preaching. So you can expect, just like a doctor expects that the patient is sick. He doesn't criticize the patient for being sick because it's a patient, obviously. Now, but if we're trying to associate with our peers, people who are friends of us, um, then that becomes something that we need to cultivate in the right mood. So therefore, we, we should look for that kind of association that is conducive to our nature, to our likings, the people who are similar to us, who we can resonate with, we, who we can talk to. Mm. Yeah, and avoid other association. So when preaching, we give association. When we're developing individual relationships, we can also, it's a give and take thing. We take and we also give. But we don't mm. take anything from people that we're trying to preach from. They don't have anything to give us. Well, we can, if we're looking for something from them, then we'll, we'll be disappointed then. If you're looking for something from them, I'm sorry? Then we'll be disappointed. Okay, okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That is very helpful. Thank you. Only nine days left. <laughs> thank Krishna and thank Gurudev. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm checking off the days. <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can never stop saying thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna devotees, any more questions or comments or realizations? Uh, Hare Krishna, there is a question I can share from uh, sharing from yesterday and the day before yesterday about uh, how the Iskan what is uh, doing. I think it's a big, uh, big thing now, now, you know, how the Chetan Mahaprabhu's uh, movement going on. The same thing we had uh, in South Chicago, the was a parade and uh, we joined in the, uh, with the Jagnat. And uh, was same thing, the Sankirtan and uh, chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, you know, going through the street. And uh, it, it was just so wonderful. And uh, and the people was responding to, you know, they was, uh, was so sweet. You know. And the same thing, uh, it was yesterday, Detroit, uh, the theater. And uh, same thing, it was a big setup and uh, was a real nice, you know, and a big uh, Sankirtan going on with almost uh, eight or 10 uh, Murnangas and uh, it, it was so sweet, you know. So I think uh, yeah, the, it's, going, it's going on. It's, uh, it's, uh, the, it's kind of devotees, I mean, it's, just, uh, it's doing good, big, big things, you know, nowadays, you know. Just a little sharing from the last two days, you know. Yeah, so, we, 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 should see, we should see the difficulties of Kali Yuga's opportunities to reach people have more festivals, have more programs, more discussions. Yes. Yeah. If we're if we're enthusiastic, then people will come and, and really investigate. Just like one of our devotees here, they they it was one particular festival they went to, well, it was just a local reggae festival. So we came in to, uh, we came in to do some uh, prashadam. So we came in uh, and we did seven, 700, 700 pizzas. Wow. 
700 pizzas, full-size pizzas. Mm. People were buying pizza like crazy. And then we were also having our morning program. People were coming to the morning program. And they just came for a music festival, one of these reggae, regular, regular program. But the devotees were there and people were happy. We cooked kitchen for them in the morning. We had pizza for throughout the day. And then we also were able to talk to people about Krishna consciousness. So it's, yeah, there's so many opportunities to spread Krishna consciousness, especially now when the weather is good, we get out there and join in the different festivals, organize things. It has an effect. It has a, it has a great effect. Thank you, Guru Mahārāj. Yeah, thank you. Continue Good. with your preaching. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Hare Krishna. Any more questions? Oh, Guru Maharaj, okay. I think there are no more questions now. Um, okay, we can uh, end here. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And we'll, um, we'll see you all tomorrow. Yes, Guru Maharaj, sure. Thank uh, you so I'll much. Be, I'll be, uh, um, I'll give class tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. And Thursday, I have to travel in the afternoon. So I won't be able to give class. So maybe we can... Um, the leaders there can uh, arrange for someone to speak on on uh, on Thursday. Gurmaraj, Thursday is um, um, Bhakti Sangha class, Charlotte devotees class, Gurmaraj. Oh, what time is that? Oh, that's it. 12, 12 o'clock uh, UK time, 12.15. Mm, yeah, it's one, one, it's one twenty, yeah, it's, one, one twenty yeah. my time. Yes, yes, Gurmaraj. Yeah. I won't be able to do that class either because I have a I have a flight at at one thirty that afternoon. Then so, I'll inform Mataji about that. Um, as yeah, so maybe one of our devotees can do it. I'll ask Shamagari Mataji what she'll say. I'll go on to that. Kari. Yeah, and Buddha Babana, he likes to. I was just talking to him yesterday. We were in London together. He was saying how much he really enjoys doing the programs here. Yes, For Guru Chandra Maharaj. Prabhu, he could also be asked. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you. So all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Sankirtan ki jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Sri Devi.